We all have our own unique set of skills. We all have our own different areas of expertise. This is why I always say there's no such thing as true equity. We are not all equal. We don't even enter this earth on an equal playing field. I was fortunate enough to grow up in a stable household with two loving parents. A mom and a dad, not a Chad and a Brad. Some children... Some kids are dealt a bad hand. They're raised in foster homes or through the system. Does that sound like equity to you? Deacons at Woke United Methodist, they want us to live in this utopian world where everything is equitable. But the problem with equity is it requires you to elevate people into positions that they're not qualified to be in. When one of my friends has a problem at their house, let's say they're let's say they're having an electrical issue, maybe something's wrong with their plumbing. You know who's one of the last people they're calling to analyze the situation? Me. Why? Because I don't know anything about electrical and plumbing. If they're having issues with one of their employees at work, they'll call me. They know I've dealt with managing employees in the past. I can analyze the problem because I have experience dealing with it. Antonio Daniels has become one of my favorite NBA broadcasters. My pals were playing the Cavs tonight. It's the late game on ESPN. I will be watching the game on Bally Sports because the broadcasters calling NBA games on ESPN are absolute trash. They know little to nothing about the Pelicans. Antonio Daniels, he's with the team every day. He's an expert when it comes to the New Orleans Pelicans. He's a former NBA player. He can break down plays as they happen. He provides insight that you can't get from someone who's never touched an NBA court or who's not around the team on a daily basis. The media, they used to give us plenty of analysts like Antonio Daniels. They used to hire experts to give viewers insight on the NFL or the NBA. There is an old saying, In the land of the blind, the man with one eye is king. In this case, it would be the woman with one eye because ESPN has been blinded by equity and Mina Kimes has used this blindness to her advantage. Maybe I'm in the minority here. I guess I'm one of very few who look to experts when analyzing sports. Thousands of people, mostly women, are relying on Mina Kimes for analysis of the NFL. Why? Who in the hell is Mina Kimes? I don't remember her leading the Seattle Seahawks to the Super Bowl. I don't remember Mina Kimes being a part of the Saints coaching staff when they won the Super Bowl in 2010. Mina Kimes has never been a water boy at the high school level. Hell, the highest level of experience she has in the NFL is growing up watching the Seahawks with her dad. If that's all it takes to qualify as an NFL analyst at ESPN... All of us would be qualified. Mina Kimes is a classic example of equity in practice. Her contract with ESPN expires in September. According to the New York Post, Mina Kimes could command a seven-figure salary during negotiations with ESPN. And you know what? She'll get it. Look, I don't begrudge Mina Kimes for making millions of dollars. I will never criticize anyone for making a living. If ESPN feels like Mina Kimes is worth one, two million dollars every year for the services and the analysis that she provides, good for her. It's not her fault that ESPN makes salary decisions based on diversity, equity, and inclusion. She is simply taking advantage of a flawed system, a system that she helped create. The Washington Post just published an expose on what they call the unlikely rise of Mina Kimes. Her colleague, Dominique Foxworth, who I believe still identifies as a male birthing person, Dom Dom claimed, Mina Kimes changed sports media. There was an era pre-Mina, and now we are living in the Mina Kimes era. Mina Kimes did not change sports media. ESPN changed sports media. Mina Kimes is just the pretty face they used to implement the change. Prior to Mina Kimes, NFL analysts, they had to actually have played in the NFL. She has forged a career as an NFL analyst based on statistics alone. Now, if you have been watching this channel for years, you already know how I feel about stats. They are 100% meaningless. 
Mina Kimes is the same statistical expert that claims wins and losses are not a quarterback stat. That's like saying wins and losses are not a pitcher stat in Major League Baseball, or they're not a coaching stat in the NFL or NBA. Wins and losses? That is the only stat that matters. DVOA, third down percentage, offensive yards per game? That means nothing. Go ask Trent Dilfer about stats. Trent Dilfer won a Super Bowl with one of the worst offenses in the history of the NFL. ESPN has used Mina Kimes to change the landscape of sports media. Let's use Dominique Foxworth's statement as a barometer here. You have the pre-Mina Kimes era and the era that we're currently living in with sports media. Which one is better? Which one's better? Before Mina Kimes, analysts on ESPN talked about sports. If you tuned into NFL Live, you watched former players and coaches break down game film. They would explain why certain play calls were called in certain situations. Former quarterbacks would give you a player's mentality. They would give you insight. Let me show you an example of what you might see on NFL Live in the Mina Kimes era. The Bears last year, they were scouting Jaquan Brisker before the draft. One of the scouts for the Bears said they liked Jaquan Brisker because he was Ph.D., poor, hungry, and desperate. The scout said, football is this kid's life. He's dedicated. He's got this hunger to succeed. He's passionate about the game of football. He is everything we are looking for in a young prospect. Now, you could argue that the scout could have used a better choice of words here, but any normal person... Any normal person could decipher what he was trying to say. How did Mina Kimes analyze the situation? What was her expert analysis? <laughs> Watch it for yourself. A Bears scout said out loud that part of the reason they liked Jaquan Brisker, the safety out of Penn State, was because he was, quote, PhD, poor, hungry, and desperate. Mm. And you hear that, you think, man, if that's what they're saying in public, what is being said behind closed doors? I mean, it's amazing that Brisker has overcome adversity and he should be championed, but to reduce his story to a draft attribute like a 40 time is to reduce who he is as a human being. That didn't look like NFL analysis to me. It looked like someone spreading the fairy tale of mythical racism. To reduce his life story to being a draft pick in a 40 time, it reduces his status as a human being. Um, that's what scouts do. It's not their job to grade your status as a human being. Their job is to analyze your skill set, your physical attributes, and figure out if you can contribute to the team. Obviously, Mina Kimes doesn't know this because she's never scouted an NFL player. One of my biggest issues with Mina Kimes, she believes she should be immune to criticism. I'm a minority woman. I belong to several marginalized groups. I should be able to say whatever the hell I want without being criticized by toxic masculinity. On several occasions, Mina Kimes has posted direct messages on Twitter, claiming to be a victim of toxic masculinity. Now look, the messages she received, they weren't nice, they were vile, there's no doubt about it, but it was no different than messages that any public figure receives. Going into the NFC Championship game last year, Mina Kimes was highly critical of Jimmy Garoppolo. He is the worst quarterback in the league on third and three with 2.16 to go in the first quarter when Aquarius lines up with a big dipper. Wind blowing at five miles an hour. Kyle Shanahan chewing two pieces of big red. His center enjoying a pregame meal of the good woke wiener. Jimmy Garoppolo has a 42 QBR rating in this scenario. Ooh, fantastic analysis, Mina. When she was critical of Jimmy G last year, Jeff Garcia called her out for it. He went on a lengthy rant on Instagram, starting off with the classic question, Who in the hell is Mina Kimes? The gist of Jeff Garcia's message was that Mina Kimes had no business analyzing Jimmy G because she's never played in the NFL. Mina Kimes responded by saying, like I was the only one critical of Jimmy G's performance this weekend. The insinuation, of course, 
Jeff Garcia is only coming after me because I'm a poor, defenseless woman. Jeff Garcia is a sexist. Maybe he's coming after you because you're presented as an expert by ESPN when you've never touched an NFL field. If you look at the cast of NFL Live, they all have one thing in common. Laura Rutledge is the host, keyword host. She's not considered the analyst for obvious reasons. Then you have Dan Orlowski, Marcus Spears, Keyshawn Johnson, Ryan Clark, all former players. Next, you have Mina Kimes. It just seems weird to me that someone who's never played the game can be presented as an expert by ESPN. Look, I'll give Mina Kimes credit for one thing. She has found a lane and she's perfected it. Ratings for NFL Live on ESPN are the highest they've been in six years. Mina Kimes is a big draw with women. Over 80,000 women tune in every day to hear the supposed expert analysis of Mina Kimes. So, there are people who enjoy watching her. Do I think she's worth a seven-figure salary? No, but I'm not making the salary decisions at ESPN. But I go back to the same question, the same question I asked a few minutes ago. There's a pre-Mina era in sports media, and then there's the Mina Kimes era. Which era is better? To me, the answer is obvious. I think Mina Kimes changed sports media for the worst. She often talks about the social issues tied to the NFL, the mythical racism, the mythical misogyny. Her analysis is tied strictly to numbers on a piece of paper because that is the only analysis she's qualified to provide. My fucking accountant can digest numbers for me. All of us can look at a sheet of numbers on a spreadsheet and figure out who is the best team on paper. If I'm coming to an expert, I want you to provide me information that I can't get myself. Look, I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Mina Kimes just isn't for me. Hell, ESPN's not for me anymore. If you want the worst sports coverage, go watch ESPN. Mina Kimes, she is their ultimate virtue signal. ESPN did not hire her for her expertise. They hired her so they could say, we elevated a woman to a position dominated by men and toxic masculinity. I don't fault Mina Kimes for accepting the job, but don't pretend you're some kind of expert when you were hired for diversity and inclusion. If ESPN presented Mina Kimes like NFL Network presents Cynthia Freeland, it would be one thing. Cynthia Freeland, she is the numbers cruncher on NFL Network. Then she passes that information to former coaches and players, the actual experts. The NFL doesn't call her the analyst because she's not. But instead, ESPN wants us to believe Mina Kimes is the expert because women can be NFL experts too. Just like everything else at ESPN, it's inauthentic bullshit. Now give me your thoughts. Do you consider Mina Kimes to be a real NFL expert, real NFL analyst? Can you properly analyze something when you've never done it yourself, you have no experience doing it? You let me know. Sound off in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe. Click the notification bell to receive all notifications from the channel. Best way to contact me is by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com, kc underscore btl84 on Twitter. I'll see you guys tomorrow.